we will link with Alex and Marisa. I am your host today, Maria Luisa, and we're going to talk about the Golden Cage Syndrome. And uh, Alex and I, we have a collaboration and it was very nice to meet her some time ago. And uh, it just worked from the very beginning. Uh, the chemistry was wonderful. And we decided... From the very that beginning, exactly. ...for the series. So uh, maybe, Alex, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you and welcome everyone. We're really happy to start our series of LinkedIn Lives every month. We're going to talk about how to change your life and how to level up your life. I'm a positive energy coach and also somebody who has worked in Fortune 500 and also lots of small companies. And together with Maria Luisa, who is also an expert in psychology, we are going to share great mindset hacks. So the word is back to you. Yes, and as you know, I am a trainer, a coach, focused on neuroscience and physiology and I help people and companies to change from the inside out. And I'm also a sketch note author, as you may have seen. So today we have a very interesting topic, uh, which is the Golden Cage Syndrome. And we want to explore together what is this and how many people suffer from that and what we can do about. So maybe, um, Alex, you can tell us what is, what is the Golden Cage Syndrome? Yes, a very, very interesting topic. And by the way, dear viewers, if you have anything, any question or any wish uh, in terms of how we can explore more in this topic, please leave us a comment in the uh, message box that is provided by this streaming uh, software. So the golden cage syndrome, it is basically that unfulfilling feeling of something is missing from your life. You feel kind of trapped in a seemingly perfect situation, might be your job, might be your, your private life, might be something that to the outside looks perfect. You feel trapped and you feel something is missing. You feel unfulfilled and you feel, okay, in your day-to-day -day life, you get up and you don't feel purpose. So that's the phenomenon. Now we're here to dig a little bit deeper and we're doing that for a reason because what we're doing as well is we're launching this month actually a really great course and you can get, we will link it afterwards in the LinkedIn post of this uh, stream, we will link the, uh, the free overview course. Have a look uh, please dear listeners. This is a course that will give you all the tools to get out of that trap. And the golden cage syndrome is called golden cage because you feel blocked in your life. You feel like you can't get out of it. It's something that many, many people experience it without having a way to put a name on it, right? And it actually hinders many people from realizing the life of their dreams. Yeah. Now, and it sounds like a contradiction, I right? like there is a kind of discrepancy between the appearance of comfort, which is outside there. Uh, so and, and the discomfort and the fulfillment they experience, right? Exactly. And that is the thing. It's kind of a dilemma to the outside and even to yourself. This phenomenon of the golden cage syndrome looks like but hang on, why am I fe not feeling fulfilled? Everything seems perfect. So let's give some examples. So for example, you might have a fantastic job with a fantastic pay, with uh, great perks, with great colleagues, with great missions and projects, but still you, in your day-to-day -day life, you're not kind of feeling that's it. You don't have passion for it. You're feeling you have to really uh, try hard every day to motivate yourself. And it's, and now this is actually a telltale sign. The, the worst thing is that you keep having that talk to yourself that, um, how do we call this? It's this internal voice that you hear the whole day that you try to convince yourself that actually everything is fine, that you shouldn't complain. So this is what we call the self-sabotaging talk or the negative self-talk. And in our course, we explore those. They are actually the blockers. And this is where it gets interesting because it's all about self-awareness and that kind of uh, realization that it's you yourself that are, is blocking yourself in that golden cage. And do you remember, uh, Maria Luisa, in our course, we explored some of these self-limiting uh, beliefs that are actually holding us back. Like, for example, my favorite one <laughs> that, uh, that everyone knows is, ah, 
uh, you can't have everything in life, right? Yes, yes, you have to decide, you have to make choices, yeah, and this is uh, very personal because it's attached to your personal experiences and habits and self-beliefs, but it's not true. It's created, it's invented by our mind. Yeah. Now this golden cage actually it's so it's it's a fascinating thing because it's a it's reinforcing itself through that self-limiting talk that we have with ourselves. So another good example would be to say, okay, life of my dreams, yeah, I have that dream, but it's probably not for me because life of of your dreams that's only for the rich yes that kind of thing and 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 people know know that and you know what what i think uh with that is it's associated because it's called golden it's not an an ordinary case it's a golden cage because it's associated with that material comfort Mm -hmm. and in fact there are so many famous personalities and people that also, they have everything. I recall, for example, Whitney Houston or Princess Diana or maybe even Britney Spears. So they live a life where you would say, oh, I would give a leg to live that life. Yeah, they to the They're they profoundly like unhappy. And so this is the kind of contradiction. And even in that in that case, that those people may think they don't even deserve being unhappy because apparently they have everything. Ah, yes what it's necessary to have a really happy life. So they don't even dare to to, to, to think they, they don't have the right to be unhappy, something like that. That is another one, yeah, that's a strong one because this kind of feeling of guilt, when that sets in, it becomes really, really difficult. As you just outlined, I mean, there might be also celebrities that are really happy, but let's take that examples of unhappy celebrities or people who have everything who are really, really, um, you know, who who shouldn't be complaining, even now I say it, and that societal belief, that social representation is always, well, we shouldn't complain because we have such a great life. And that's the part of golden. And it's so nice to explore that because golden means you're feeling comfort, comfort, you have everything in life, and then that self-guilt comes in and like, I shouldn't be complaining, should I? And also, societally, it's very interesting because you feel guilty in terms of your entourage. You feel guilty because you feel, oh, what might the others think if I give everything up, you know, what might they think? And that's a typical one as well. And we feel, oh, God, I can't possibly give that good job up. What will people say? Yes, of course. And it's very individual. So what we what you go back here is that happiness is not depending on any material achievements or financial or social status or things like that. So it's depending on us. We make it happen. Um, and I agree with you. I mean, it can manifest in different ways, like family constraints or social pressure even that can create that cage around us. Yeah. Um, what could be some of the things that you would say people can do to break free from the golden cage? And this is where our course comes in. That's <laughs> right. Our course, we are talking about really easy but powerful mindset habits uh, that can actually teach you self-awareness. Because remember, we talked so much in our course, and by, by the way, dear viewers, our course is so easy to consume. It's only 15 minutes every day. It's called Power Minutes because we kept the videos of the course really short, only 15 minutes per day. In those 15 minutes, we teach you how to have the self-awareness of realizing that negative self-talk or or that self-sabotaging elements of every day because some of us some of that is programmed it's kind of so deeply in your unconscious we don't even realize it anymore i can talk of my own experience sometimes i just feel so ingrained in my daily patterns that i don't realize that this is what keeps me from advancing that's true. I mean, 90% of the, of the thoughts we have are repetitive and most yeah. of them are negative. Uh, not not just for because we're so pessimistic, but it's by everybody's statistics. So if you continue feeding that thought, so you're going to stay the same, an unhappy yeah. person, creating the same life that you don't like. So I think really it, everything starts for me also with self-awareness. And also, um, ca- also another point I would also recommend is because this is linked to a lot many times uh, to work uh, to material belongings to have a more clear separation between work life and personal life Hmm. 
So, but for this, you have also to step back and to observe yourself with more awareness. Exactly, the self-awareness. And that's so hard. Like I, when I started to work on myself, on self-awareness for myself, I, re I realized that actually everyone says, yeah, I'm self-aware, but actually no. Once we get to know our patterns of thinking, well, I, I would call it for myself almost in the subconscious because to really explore your subconscious is really hard. I leave that to the professionals who work with, uh, for example, I can think of what the school that you're coming from, they are really working with some subconscious, aren't they? Of course, yes. Yeah. It, it, um, rules, it rules 95% of our behavior. Even, even the most conscious person that may say, I'm conscious all the time, this is not true. I mean, marketing, uh, neuromarketing knows this very well. They're exactly. driving our behavior that we buy the things, advertising. So all yeah, of things. Works so, with that. Like most of decisions are subconscious and it's not a bad thing at all. But it's not, it's all. not a bad thing, exactly. Yeah. But like for, the, for the work that we're doing in this course now, I think what we're trying to do is we're getting to the stage before the subconscious is to at least get aware of what we're doing in our daily lives, the habits that we can observe. Because as I learned from you, the subconscious we can only access, it's, it's almost before we get into dreams, into sleep. What I learned is also, you know, the, the stage between conscious, being conscious in the day and sleep. That is the, the, the transfer over to the subconscious. Yeah. That is really hard. You have to, that's another level, I guess, for conscious. Yeah, this is, this is, yeah, yeah. It takes uh, the scope of these 15 minutes because we're yeah. almost at the end. And I think one important thing also to break uh, through that the golden cage syndrome is to reconnect with the things you really enjoy. Because oh, yes. most people, they have unlearned to do things that I really like because mm. they are more like I, I should do this, I need to do that, I don't deserve. So connect with one of the things that you enjoy and maybe uh, having uh, meeting your friends or cooking or doing some hobby or whatever yeah. it is, doing nothing maybe for some. Because you said another powerful self-sabotaging belief is I don't deserve. And dear viewers, please leave us a comment if you'd like us to do another LinkedIn Live on the imposter syndrome because so many of us are blocked by I don't deserve beliefs. Of course we deserve. I mean, happiness and living a life of your dream is for everyone. So that's another strong self-sabotaging belief. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, I mean, we all have experienced moments where we feel like we're trapped in our in the constraints of our environment on our life. And, and we all have uh, have our strategies. And maybe um, some of us have said, as you said, mentioned before, I cannot have everything. So we're mm -hmm. resigned. We really think that's the maximum I can reach in yeah. my life and happiness and I should be happy because there are so many people that have less than me but, but in reality it's the kind of resignation actually and that is uh, for me that's now my personal take on this I think this is sad because we should all have the chance it's a democratic one we should all have the chance to follow <laughs> whatever we have been dreaming of when we were tiny you know when we were ch children so why should this be reserved to a few in society Absolutely. I, I completely agree with you. And there are ways that you really uh, can explore what is your passion, how to put it into work, uh, how you how to live it. It's not, uh, it's some work you have to invest on that because many people don't know what they, what they like. They, um, they, they think what they like is what other people like or what the environment expects from them. Yeah, so they behave. Con they behave really conditioned by the environment and the people around them and the expectations exactly. of society. So they never took the time to explore themselves, what they really want, what they truly are. So it's not that easy for most of the people. Some people may mm -hmm. know it since childhood, and then it takes some effort to put it in a way that you can manifest, that you can live it. And this effort, we want to take you on a journey. And for that one, we're going to leave the link to the free course. Check that out, dear viewers, because I think the free course gives a good overview of all the techniques we will teach. And then you can decide if you're ready for that journey, because obviously we need to have self-awareness that we're ready. <laughs> so that is the first step. So I know we're coming to the end of today's very short session. I hope you enjoyed and we're looking forward to meet you next time. Alex, yes, you thank that? you for listening in and leave us comments even in the LinkedIn post if you like for future topics you would like to hear. Thank you.
Bye-bye.